Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on August 15th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather forecast. Having a look here, always with the last 48 hours of imagery here of our sun, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Only one strong C-class solar flare to talk about. Other than that, no major space weather events have come our way or are on our way. Having a look here, the last 48 hours incoming. This is where we can see C-class solar flares and as well plasma filaments. Looking at the last 48 hours outgoing. Minor C-class solar flares there as well. The most recent solar flare did produce a coronal mass ejection, but it is not Earth-facing. Having a look here, multi-spectrum, most active regions in view. And as well, plasma filaments that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. As they are lining up. Looking at another light here, our amazing sun and all of its glory. Thank you everybody for following along with daily events worldwide, hitting that play button. Thank you for all the likes. Thank you for all the comments. I'm going to be catching up soon. I know there's been a few days here missing, but I'm about to get all caught up. And I want to welcome all of the new followers to the channel. Over a thousand new followers in the past week. Welcome to daily events worldwide, keeping humanity aware and prepared. Having a look here at sunspot regions, we do have seven active sunspot regions. One of them in the northern hemisphere of our sun is a very fast growing sunspot region there. You can see it splitting apart right here. Amazing images of our sun. Those sunspots are about five times the size of Earth. Having a look now at current space weather conditions, there are none to report. Solar winds are coming in at about 294 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux remains in a heightened C range after throwing off that strong C-class solar flare, but nothing in M range for the past two days. Proton flux is low, KP index sitting at two. And then let's have a look here at the NOAA space prediction spiral showing the most recent CME, little green circle here on this map is Earth. You can see that big coronal mass ejection taking off from our sun, not towards Earth. Iswa reporting the same thing, having looked there at the timestamp top left corner on arrival dates for incoming space weather. We are expecting solar winds here to pick up over the next 24 to 36 hours. And on this map, we show the yellow circle as Earth. Quick glance here at Lasco 3 showing all of the activity coming from our sun the past two days, 13th until the 15th. See me blast there and as well outgoing position right there. And then something just recently on the right-hand side, outgoing. I do believe that was that strong C-class solar flare. Still waiting for more imagery to come in. Right-hand side. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours. As there's something building, peculiar earthquake here. Big 6.1 earthquake yesterday in the Marianas Trench. That's right. The deepest trench on the planet rocking a 6.1 earthquake pretty rare place for such a large earthquake as well notable 5.5 there Indonesia 5.3 rocking India northern India that happened yesterday as well a 5.9 was reported Prince Edward Islands region south of Africa that was all yesterday pretty strong shakers and as well very deep earthquake here the Fiji Islands 532 kilometer depth And then Alaska seeing activity as well through the Aleutian Islands. 5.0 magnitude at Unimac Island. 
And as well, notable here, Haida Gwaii, Canada, 4.4, off the coast of British Columbia. Subduction zone, baby. We're waiting for something to come here. Hawaii, seeing a lot of activity as well. Having a look at USGS, the reporting 251 earthquakes in the past 24 hours, so a slight increase as our average is around 200 to 220 in a 24-hour period. This is a look at Alaska the last 24 hours. As Nova Rupta earthquakes are still continuing. And then I wanted to give you a glance here at Hawaii. As the Kilauea volcano, there could be an imminent eruption here. Keeping an eye on infrared imagery of the summit caldera. And nothing has popped up yet. But lots of earthquakes here. 72 in the region. Most of them outside of the caldera itself. So pressure is mounting at Kilauea. Southwest Rift. Heads up, Hawaii. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody that was affected in Maui. We could have another disaster here forming as there could be an imminent eruption at Kilauea. So yeah, if you are living on the big island, just a heads up. As we've already seen a natural disaster here affect parts of Maui. As it will never look the same again through the region. A lot of people speculating on what happened there, but... Natural disaster. That's what it was. Some very strong winds coming from the north. Nothing could stop the flames. Having a look here across the U.S., nothing major to report. Notable earthquake here east of San Francisco Bay, 3.4 Alamo, California. Looking at the last seven days, no major swarms to report. Just some regular average activity across California State and the Pacific Northwest. Carrying on here through Central America. Caribbean plate, very quiet today through Puerto Rico. That's notable. Only one earthquake to report. South America, Peru, 5.2, as well as 4.9 there. Colombia, and a 4.4. San Antonio de los Cobros, Argentina, over 200 kilometer depth. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Not too much to report across Europe. And we do have 48 volcanoes that are erupting around the world and Mount Etna just woke up a couple nights ago with a very large and effusive eruption this is a look at the last seven days for earthquakes across the world western ring of fire is definitely active waiting for something to give it's still way too quiet compared to what it has been so speaking of volcanoes let's have a look at our SO2 forecast Starting overlooking Europe, as you will see that dark red region that is heavy contents of SO2 coming off from Mount Etna eruption. You can see the island of Italy right there. And this is where Mount Etna is showing all of that SO2 flowing east into the Mediterranean. Overlooking North America as Northwest Territories are seeing some horrible fires up there still. Along the border with Saskatchewan. Notable the SO2 coming out of Alaska and the Aleutian Islands. There are no forest fires there. The Aleutian Islands getting ready to wake up maybe. And as well Kamchatka, Eastern Russia. You can see big plumes coming off the island of Kamchatka as there are four active volcanoes there. Let's have a look at satellite imagery overlooking the coast of Africa as we have a large dust storm that is being picked up and carried across the Atlantic Ocean. Very visible here on satellite imagery. And that, that is all flowing westward into the Gulf of Mexico. Overlooking Canada and the United States, lots of wildfire smoke coming from Northwest Territories. That'll be sweeping into uh, Northern Ontario over the next 24 hours. And then as well, you've got some fires that are erupting through parts of Oregon. And as well, Idaho, keeping an eye on that situation. 
They've had lots of moisture, so it's not as dry as it has been. Having a look now at tropical systems, we have a couple areas of interest. As well, we have Fernanda, Hurricane Fernanda, who most likely will be tracking all the way to Hawaii here. Stay tuned for full details and forecasts as they change. You've got Tropical Storm Greg. We're already at G, folks, for the Pacific hurricane season. And Dora is still alive. That thing's been spinning for a long time. <laughs> and then we've got Typhoon Tropical Storm Lan, who has made it across Japan and will be heading out towards eastern Russia. Other than that, no major hurricanes or typhoons. Except for in the long range, it could see quite an intensification of Hurricane Fernanda. Having a look here at the last few days of images across the Pacific Ocean. And then, yeah, very visible here, all of the dust particulates that have been carried across the equatorial regions of the Atlantic. Heading down into Nicaragua right now. Let's have a look at weather forecast, world weather forecast. This is brought to you by NASA Worldview. Having a look here, we do have two lows affecting Canada this week. One coming out of Manitoba and Ontario. And as well, one hanging around in Ontario and through, heading out through eastern Canada. Big low by the 17th developing through Manitoba. And as well... Atmospheric river of moisture riding out of the Gulf of Mexico right up the eastern seaboard of the United States. So watch for flooding conditions through Carolina State's all eastern ski seaboard. As well, look at the intensification there of the next tropical system. Overlooking the Atlantic, big strong low pressure system coming in into Europe, long range. And you could see something forming there through equatorial regions of the Atlantic. Overlooking Europe, still got a lingering low sweeping across Sweden right now. And as well, a couple surface lows that are forming through Germany. Big low off the coast of the United Kingdom. Overlooking Africa, daily evaporation rains, but parts of Guinea and Senegal you're going to see some heavy rains over the next couple days as we could see a tropical system forming from those lows. Overlooking Southeast Asia, the Indian Ocean, monsoon season in full effect, lingering low over Bangladesh, and now some possible tropical systems developing through the Indian Ocean. And then look at the Southern Hemisphere, Australia. Over the next few days, you've got a system south of you that will be bringing bands of rain through parts of Melbourne, breaking through eastern parts of the continent. Massive low pressure systems in the Southern Hemisphere right now. Wait until you see the polar vortex. I'll show you momentarily, but put these into motion here for the next few days. There are some vigorous storms in the Southern Hemisphere right now. What is going on with our world? Well, let's have a look at our upper level jet stream right now. A little oblonged, not looking like it should be. Equatorial region, kind of wondering where it is. So there's our northern hemisphere. Upper level winds across the Pacific. Across the Atlantic. Across Africa and the Indian Ocean. Noticing the winds at upper level. 165 kilometers an hour right across the equator, the equator of our planet. Now let's just go back to last year at this time. This is what our winds looked like at last year at this time. Notice the equatorial regions. 
notice the winds. And as well, the southern hemisphere polar vortex. Something's up. Something has changed dramatically with our atmosphere. Last year versus this year. This is our world. This is your channel. And thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to smack that like button. Get in the comment section. Tell me where you're watching from. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily do. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.